everybody. Welcome to Los Angeles Local Union Performers. I'm Kevin McCorkle and I'm curating this channel. And every Friday morning at 7 a.m. I'm posting a new video. This week's video is about a very important anniversary of mine. You know, seven years ago this week, I was given a death sentence. I woke up feeling really tired. And as the day progressed, I felt more and more tired. And I had had what I thought was maybe a low-grade flu. So I called the Motion Picture Television Health Hospital, which is five minutes away from my house. And I said, I, I need to see a doctor. I need to get checked out. Well, they were super busy. And she said, the best I can do is a nurse practitioner. And I said, well, what's the difference? And she said, well, a nurse practitioner can't give you a prescription for narcotics. And I said, look, I'm not angling for Oxycontin here. I just need to see what's wrong. So I went over and the second that the nurse practitioner saw me, her face dropped. She said, Kevin, you look really, really pale. Let me see your eyelid. And she told me to lower my bottom eyelid. And she said, you look very jaundiced. You know what? I'm going to give you a blood test and have you see a doctor. I know we're busy today, but I think it's very important. So I took the blood test and about an hour later, this doctor comes in. He's, he looks like a teenager. And he said, Mr. McCorkle, we have some serious matters to discuss. I'm like, what? What did the blood test tell you? And he said, you have acute myelogenous leukemia. Your hemo count is at five. You can die at five. You will die at three. It's a good thing you came in because if you hadn't, you probably would have stroked out in the middle of the night and died. You need to get over to the emergency room and get an emergency blood transfusion. Talk about a two by four to the face. So my wife took me over to the local hospital and I got that blood transfusion and I started chemotherapy the very next day. My union saved my life. Well, my union didn't save my life. The doctors, the nurses, the goodwill, the prayers, the beneficial universe saved my life. But the union paid for it through our health plan. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about our health plan, how important it is, how valuable it is, and if you're not able to participate in it because of an earning situation, I want to talk about a strategy to get you to that place. So buckle up and get ready for the ride. I want to qualify, I am not a healthcare expert. I am just sharing my personal uh, experience with healthcare and what I've learned from you know, Googling the health plan and looking on the website and talking to other union members and you know, just my own personal experience. So I want to share a little bit of the history of our health plan first. Our health plan was started in 1960. In 1960, SAG, it was just SAG then, we were negotiating for residuals. Prior to that time, we had just gotten paid for our work and no residuals were involved. And we soon figured out that our images were gonna last forever and we needed to be paid for that usage in the future. So we talked to the producers and said, we gotta have this. And the producers countered back saying, okay, we see you need to have a piece of the pie, you hungry actors but we can't give you residuals on the work that we've already done. It'll bankrupt us. So anything prior to 1960, it's just we paid you and you're done. Moving on, we'll have residuals. Millions and millions of dollars worth of potential residuals were given up in order to settle for a lump sum of $2.65 million that the producers gave to SAG at the time to create our pension and health fund. And I think at that point it was called pension and health welfare fund. Well, that $2.65 million has grown to over $3.8 billion in assets. It's amazing the growth that we've had 
and how we have used this fund to take care of so many people, not only health-wise, but pension-wise. I don't want to get into pension today because I don't want to tackle too much. So we'll just stick with health today and we'll have another video on pension. So how does it work? That's sort of the history of it. And for you history buffs, you can dive in deeper if you want to, but that's the history in a nutshell. How does it work? Well, the plan works by having our producer employers donate to the plan every time we work a SAG after contract. That's why it's so important to not work off the card and to not do non-union work because these SAG after contracts have added benefits. So if you do a union job, you get paid your scale rate or the rate that's been negotiated plus 18% goes to the fund to take care of health and pension. After you have 10 years of vested earnings, you qualify for your pension. And like I said, I'm going to have a whole separate uh, video about that. But in order to qualify for the health plan, you need to meet a certain earnings threshold. And that earnings threshold has gone up gradually throughout the years to keep the plan healthy and make sure that the plan doesn't go bankrupt. So right now, that health plan is at, let me just pull it up here. Uh, plan one, if you earn $35,020, you qualify for plan one. There's also a plan two, which is a higher premium and a little bit less coverage, but it's still an amazing health plan. Your earnings for plan two start at $18,040. So as soon as you cross that threshold of $18,040, and that's both sessions and residuals, you qualify for plan two. Now, to help people out that are doing lots of work and making a little money because the scale rate is so low, and that is background actors and actors working in web series and other contracts out there that aren't as uh, financially rewarding. They've also made a, a different uh, threshold for that. That's if you work 84 days. If you have 84 days of paid union work through the four quarters of the year, they measure each quarter and they give you a quarterly report of your earnings. There's one additional plan for those of you who are you know, hitting that middle age. If you're 40 or older, and you have 10 health plan credits prior to your 40th birthday, then you can qualify by earning $13,000, which is $5,040 less than the minimum qualifier for plan two. Whew, I got through all the math. These health plans are Cadillac health plans, you guys. They're, they're similar to what Congress has. So, because the plan depends on all of this money coming in from the producers and it has to take care of as many actors as possible, if you don't meet these thresholds, then the 18% that is contributed by the producers just goes right into the plan for the general good of everybody. Uh, I started my retirement early at 55, so every penny that I've made since 55 has not gone to my benefit, but it's gone to the betterment of the fund. So that's how we keep the fund viable. But everybody wants to try to get in on this. Everybody wants to try to qualify, and right, rightfully so. How do you qualify for it? How do you meet those thresholds? Because $35,020 that's a lot for an actor to make. In the general population, $18,040 is poverty level. But for actors, that $18,000 a year might be a bit difficult to take on. So, what I wanna do is encourage you to diversify your career. If you work one or two commercials, commercials are not traditionally paying 
the money that they paid in the past. You know, in the past, you could do one or two commercials and make $100,000 and be skipping down the lane. Not so much anymore. So commercials are, are run less and the residuals aren't as great. So you have to focus on how you can fold that commercial work into your overall earnings plan. Same with TV and film. The rates that we used to get in the, back in the day, you'd have a rate and you wouldn't work for scale. They would say, what's, what's your rate? What was the last rate you got paid? $15,000. All right, we'll pay you $17,000 for this episode. That's sort of gone extinct. And what we deal with now more often than not are minimums, unless you're a name actor or an actor who's done a ton of work. My idea is in order to qualify for these plans, you have to have diversity. You can no longer just be a commercial actor. You can no longer just be an actor who does two or three TV shows a year and everything's great. Oh, there's my partner, my partner Biscuit. He's helping me out. So what, what is a good strategy to employ is try to make a certain amount of money in each category. So if you do a couple of commercials, if you have a couple of guest stars or co-stars on a TV show, you do 15 days of background work, you uh, do, do an audio book, which audio books is a new big thing for us. We've negotiated a contract and you literally produce the work yourself. So if you, if you get your chops up and you do an audio book or you work on your voiceover chops and you manage to do a few voiceover uh, projects in a year or you're lucky enough to get involved with a loop group for a while, those are the ways that you can gradually silo off these different areas of work as an actor and end up qualifying, hopefully for plan one. You know, $38,000 or 35, I keep saying 38, it's 35,000, 20 dollars that's a lot for an actor to make every year. But if you have a strategy and a plan to do that and work in a way that doles it out to the different contracts and different uh, uh, jobs that SAG-AFTRA has covered, then you're more likely to meet the minimums and enjoy the coverage that is so beneficial, especially in these times. So that's my idea for your coverage. Uh, subscribe and, and share and give me your suggestions down below. Like I said uh, in the intro, there is a team of people that take care of the plan. 20 people from SAG-AFTRA, and those include uh, four of our top lawyers and our CEO, uh, David White, Duncan Crabtree Ireland, John McGuire and Ray Rodriguez, and the rest are actors, just like you and I. In fact, I've worked with a couple of them in projects over the years. And the other side is the sort of labor leaders in the industry, from Fox, from Disney, from CBS, NBC, uh, you know, all sorts of different uh, media conglomerates. So they get together periodically and make decisions about how they're going to run the plan, whether or not premiums are gonna go up or down, whether or not they're going to, uh, in, in fact, during this time, I'm wondering if they're gonna come up with something to help us in these COVID times, since we haven't been able to work for six or eight months. But remember, they're restricted by their fiduciary duty to the plan. So as much as we want every single person in our union to be covered by this plan, and as much as we would love for this plan to, you know, we could qualify with $200 of earnings and then get complete coverage without premiums, it's not going to happen because the plan has to stay healthy. It's their fiduciary duty to make sure that this plan stays healthy. But that doesn't mean you can't ask them questions and you can't, you know, reach out to them and suggest changes. So I hope this has been helpful for everybody. And we'll do another one on pension, but please, please do your best to utilize all these different union contracts and get to the point where you're covered by this incredible health care that we have available to us. Till next time, enjoy the journey.